there is one big story this Friday, and it is Apple, the first company ever to hit a $3 trillion market cap. And this chart tells the story. Look at the $900 billion of market cap we've added so far in 2023. What is the story here? We will get to it in just a moment. But I remind you, last time we were near that level was at the beginning of 2022. It's taken us that long to get back. There is one person you want to speak to on a day like today, and it is Bloomberg's Mark Gurman. Mark, you cover this company as close as any journalist on the planet. I want to start by asking you, what kind of a moment is this? What kind of a milestone in technology history is registering a $3 trillion market cap? Ed, thank you so much for having me. Obviously, this is an incredibly big milestone uh, for Apple or any technology company, really. And for Apple to do this, to get back to where it was in early 2022, you saw what happened to the broader market over the last year or so. And to really come back up that mountain and get back to here is a big moment for the company. I think that you saw a slew of departures, not only at the executive level, but maybe at the mid-level or lower level of the company. And one continued theme on those departures was people felt like their RSUs or the restricted stock units would not really pay out as much money as maybe they can earn at another company. Right. And the really stock point. coming back up. Right. I think that could be a key way that Apple will be able to retain people uh, moving forward as well. It adds new excitement to the rank and file of the company. They know what they're working towards in terms of an ultimate payout for the consumer it doesn't really have an impact. But I think internally at Apple, it is a something they'll never say. But I think it is a, a quite a positive moment. That deep reporting is such a good point as well. It has not yet been brought up in our coverage on Bloomberg Television of the $3 trillion milestone. The short-term story for the consumer has been about Vision Pro. But you argue in today's Tech Daily that actually, if you think about the $3 trillion market cap, it's not got much to do with Vision Pro at all. What's your point? Yeah, I think we would hit this $3 trillion market cap, whether or not Apple announced the Vision Pro headset in June at the developers conference or not. I think the Vision Pro story, you know, very long term for Apple could become an Apple Watch or iPad sized opportunity, uh, which is about $25 billion annually to the bottom line. And that's in the real long term. In the short term, you're not likely to see this generate more than 2 to $4 billion a year annually for Apple, uh, which is essentially very small. It's 1% to 2% of their overall annual revenue. It's really the ecosystem play, right? It's the idea that the ecosystem locks you in and such where you're going to own an iPhone, an iPad, a Mac, and then every few years or so, you're going to upgrade to new models. On top of that, you're going to subscribe uh, to services. You're going to use Apple Care. You're going to visit Apple retail stores. You're going to buy more accessories like AirPods, the Apple Watch, uh, and maybe one day the Vision Pro at a cheaper price as well, right? And so that stickiness, the idea where consumers are willing to spend extra. They're really willing to shell out for a new iPhone, the priciest iPhone with the most storage you can get. That's what makes this company so lucrative and so special to the shareholder. Uh, one really important aspect that we also haven't touched upon about this $3 trillion measure is that we're heading right into iPhone season. Believe it or not, we're only about two months away from the iPhone 15 uh, going on sale. The iPhone 15 is going to be a pretty significant upgrade on both the low-end models and the high-end models for the first time in three years since the iPhone 12 launched in 2020. New design, big camera improvements, changes to the display on the cheaper models, you're going to see another big iPhone upgrade cycle. And so I think consumers are excited to only be eight weeks away uh, from that and shareholders see that excitement. And so you're likely to see yes. a big influx of purchases in just a few months, which obviously is going to drive attention to purchasing the stock too. Mark, quickly, the, the one phrase or word you haven't used is artificial intelligence. Why are we not talking about Apple in the context of artificial intelligence? Because Apple has really set out this recent AI boom, right? Over the past year or so, you've seen Microsoft, Google, obviously OpenAI with ChatGPT. You've seen Amazon all throw around the buzzword and talking about their new generative AI. Uh, chatbots and such. Apple has really stood on the sidelines here. And I don't anticipate any significant new AI-related service from Apple to launch uh, until the tail end of 2024, uh, calendar year 2024, at the earliest. So there's not much there. I know there's been some speculation from analysts and such that Apple is nearing some sort of generative AI ecosystem. There's nothing coming soon. And so I don't really think that could be priced into the stock as of yet. 
And I don't necessarily think that Apple is planning very significant AI initiatives other than a new AI-based health coaching service for next year. But obviously, the mother of all AI projects, as Tim Cook has said, is the company's self-driving car. You're unlikely to see that uh, at least for another four years or so.